And we're not going to cover it this year. We'll cover the big ones, but that's it. It was a nightmare last year, but we will stream Games Fest at the very least. Instead, this week, we just wanted to say thank you to everyone. We are only 100 away from 7,000 subscribers. And while that still seems like a relatively small number, this time last year, we were just barely above 1,500, which is insane. So whether you watch our videos, hang out in our Discord, or just watch our streams, we can't help but appreciate every single viewer and member of our community. Without you guys, we wouldn't be where we are. Yeah, thank you. Enough mushy stuff. Welcome to Necro News, the show where we cover the hottest gaming news from the last week. This week, we are going to cover the loss of hundreds of Sony games, why everyone should just shut the f*** up about it, the latest modding drama, and much more. So, subscribe to Necro News and leave a like and comment to let us know you care. Before any of that though, let's talk about Pal World. The game has been a runaway success, selling a combined 25 million copies between Xbox and Steam. Not only that, but it also broke the record for the biggest launch of a third-party game on Game Pass. Which is pretty good for a game that a lot of people wrote off as a ripoff. Not to mention, they just launched a trailer for their newest update, which showcases a new raid enemy, Bella Noir. Wood. But then, out of nowhere, Bucky, the community manager of Power World, showed off this screen cap, emphasizing that there's more coming in this update other than the hot goth GF. But not everything is as perfect as it would seem, as the company is suffering from, can you guess it? Success, I guess. As a small company of only 55 employees has made around $65 million following the massive release of the game. Takuro Mizobi, the CEO of Pocket Bear, had an interview with Bloomberg and stated that the game profits were too big for a studio with our size to handle. Though he did later claim that he has no interest in expanding or offering shares in the company, he would be okay with an acquisition if it meant that Pocket Bear remains a small company. With that said, Pocket Bear did release an application form in their official Discord, looking for volunteers to help bug test the game, and are looking for an artist to make comics for Power World. So if either of those interests you, we'll link it down below. Just when we thought Sony was doing something right with the release of Stellar Blade and Tifa Swimsuit, they turned around and did something really stupid. Like completely disregarding their fans when they lose thousands of dollars. According to Metro UK, there's a strange bug that's affecting PlayStation players by removing all the purchased games from their libraries. It's not just PS5s being affected either, it's PS4 and Vitas. Though honestly, who uses a Vita anymore? So many people still use the Vita. Wait. No, I'm not joking, Ellie. But no one buys a game on Vita, so Vita owners are safe. Anyway, at least 50 PlayStation gamers have reported that digitally purchased games have gone missing with no way of retrieving them. Some people have claimed that they've lost upwards of 400 games. A gamer going by the name DSuds posted on the very reputable source who read it. For the last few months, there's been a bug impacting a relatively small amount of PlayStation Network users in which all digital licenses, including purchased games and titles added to one's library via PlayStation Plus, become decoupled from your transaction history, which shows you purchased those things. He went on to add that if he were trying to restore his purchases, then every single license in your account would be removed, getting rid of everything you've ever purchased. And what is Sony doing about this overwhelmingly huge problem? Absolutely nothing. Sony support is reportedly telling people to just wait. And some users have been waiting for over four months. We got your favorite thing, disappointment. So uh, here's hoping they fix it. The PSA for PlayStation users, if you lose any of your games in any way, do not use the restore license feature. All right, gamers, let's play a game. We're gonna list a series of titles and you guys tell us in the comments what they all have in common. And there's only one right answer, so give it a shot. That's right, every single one of these fan games didn't shut the fuck up about it. And, as it turns out, the eternal words of Wise Willy really are wise. According to an ex-Pokemon company lawyer who did an interview with Aftermath, it's the people who don't shut the fuck up about it that are the reasons the lawyers know who to go after. Nah, oh, really? Gosh, who could have seen that coming? But yeah, according to him, it's thanks to you folks. I would be sitting in my office minding my own business when someone from the company would send me a link to a news article or would stumble across it myself. Surprisingly, however, he added that if people didn't ask for money or a Kickstarter or get any type of funding, Nintendo might possibly leave them alone. Which is bullshit, but whatever. In case you aren't aware of it... SHUT THE FUCK UP ABOUT IT! The fact that we had to say anything at all just proves that people do not learn. 
Our next story is a doozy, so we'll do our best to give you a timeline of events. First, let me introduce you to Star Sector. It's a game that, according to the dev, is one where you can fly around with your highly customizable fleet, explore, build stuff, blow stuff up, advance your character. It's the usual space shit. The game is also highly moddable, and there are hundreds of community mods that do anything from making the game more anime-oriented, adding new ships, new factions, and of course, because this is the internet, making it into an adult-oriented game. One such mod has caused quite the stir in the Star Sector community, as a modder named President Matt Damon, or PMD, created a popular mod called Take No Prisoners that extended the captain system in the game to do much, much more. And then someone else used the Take No Prisoners mod as a base for their mod called Ray- We'll call it Redacted Mod. The Redacted Mod did a lot of things, but mainly made the game not safe for work with two sides. One side makes the game essentially prison ship. The other side add things like fully romanceable characters with added dialogues, additional quests, facilities, and a grappling hook. But the most important addition to the mod is this fully animated head pad. This head pad is what caused a series of events that almost collapsed the community. YouTuber and Star Sector content creator Ironclad Lion made a video with an unnamed clip of this mod's head pad animation for a split second. It's unknown what becomes of these prisoners, but there are rumors of head padding and hand holding. That's it? Following the release of this video, he was then banned from the unofficial Star Sector Discord on the premise of promoting sexual violence. The Discord mod then proceeded to ban anyone who brought up the fact that ICL was banned, as many who were familiar with the mod stated that he was probably unfairly banned for speaking about the redacted mod in the Discord server, a rule which was unwritten but strictly enforced. That said, ICL never actually spoke about the redacted mod on the server. All he did was post his video which had a completely unnamed split-second clip of the headpat feature in the mod. So this attempt at censorship ended up completely backfiring as people were getting interested in the mod that everyone was being banned over. So, as many players started trying the redacted mod, they found that while the game does have a bit of struggle snuggling in it, it also has tons of very good content as well. Naturally, this caused a divide in the community, and a pretty significant one at that. You have four groups of people. People who want this mod gone forever. People who don't care. People who want the Lover's Embrace skill for min-maxing, and the people who like the wholesome part and think everything else is overblown. So as discussion of the mod increased due to the new exposure, the Discord moderators went on a full banning spree and banned an incredible amount of people, regardless of if they were for or against the mod. In response to the entire debacle, PMD claimed to leave the modding scene and then quickly returned, stating, Nah, I'm cool, here's TNP2. And for a time, everyone was happy, and the community just kept gripping on the mods for their sudden power trip. And then shit hit the fan. <laughs> Players suddenly found out that PMD had put malware inside of TNP2 and multiple mods he was maintaining for other modders to keep them up to date and compatible. The malware would corrupt your save beyond repair if you were using any of his maintained mods while also using the redacted mod. But since redacted mod used PMD's own Take No Prisoners mod as a base, it also bricked the save of anyone using his mod as well. So yeah. Everyone lost their collective shit. Because, you know, that's illegal. So in the end, PMD was completely banned from the unofficial Discord, shunned from the community, and to top it all off, he was banned from the official forums by the lead dev of the game, Alex. As far as the moderators of the Discord who started this entire shit show, they've completely disavowed PMD's actions by calling them icky. Anyway, if you are curious about the redacted mod, it's called Rat Battle Sector. Oh, Eve, how I've missed you. I spent over two years in that game, wasting my life away between spreadsheets, communications, and so, so much flex. You mean the game that you spent over $500 on while we were trying to move a decade ago? Anyway, Eve developers CCP revealed that they will be making a survival game set within the Eve universe. Currently, the game is only known as Project Awakening and is pretentiously called the next step in creating a virtual world more meaningful than real life. The new game will feature player freedom, consequences, and a universe that will evolve from the actions and efforts of its players. The not Chinese Communist Party's CEO, Omar Vagar Peterson, stated that part of the game's vision is to open game development to everyone. Players will have tools that will allow them to add their own features and functionality to the game. Cool concept. You want to know what could fuck it up? It's on the blockchain. I don't know what that is. Well, okay, so 
Okay, so blockchain is like a like a book, right? Like it keeps track of stuff, but instead of being in one place, it's all over the internet. And uh, every time someone writes in it, everyone else gets a copy of the new book, but they also have a copy of the old book. And so now they have two books, which makes it really secure and hard to steal or something. I got it up into that second half. Allow me to explain. Blockchain is, at its core, an electronic ledger. It tracks transactions with data that cannot be changed once it is entered. Each item in the blockchain has to be tagged so that it can then be tracked. Now, as to how this can be used in-game, it could potentially be an effective and efficient anti-cheat mechanism. It's like having a secure receipt attached to a digital good. Now, blockchain could allow player-generated tagged assets to be created. That way, when an item is created, the game will be able to track the assets back to the original creators as well as anyone who has ever owned it. Hope that helps. Bye! Cool. Thanks, Leah. So that doesn't sound that bad, though. So then why are people concerned? Well, because everything on the blockchain is irreversible. So, like, if you're hacked or something, the devs can't roll back your character to get your stuff back. It's gone forever. It's stupid. But who cares? Because let's call this game for what it really is. Space Roblox. <gasps> Okay, well, anyway, if you're interested in the game, though, you can sign up for the May playtest in the link below. Hi, this is Skull, the editor. We don't have a BAB this week, so I'm going to throw in a quick promotion for Balatro. If you want to lose an immense amount of time for only $15, give this game a look. Unless, of course, you're in a country that thinks it's gambling, in which case, sucks to be you, I guess. And here are the games coming out this week. We've got a lot of good games like Princess Peach, Dragon's Dogma 2, and Rise of Ronin. And here's our streaming schedule for the week. I'm gonna finally be playing Galarian's Rion for you guys and Ellie, and also World's End Club. Boy, it's an edgy week. And that's it for this week's Nickel News. If you like what we do here and wanna keep up to date with everything, consider subscribing to the channel. As always, thank you for watching and an extra special thank you to our channel members for your extra support. If you've made it this far into the video, post some weird emoji. Yeah, do that. So until next time, bye. bye.